Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. Thursday, 3 o'clock. Welcome to Condo Insider, Hawaii show about association living. I hope some of you in the last two days had a chance to go down to the Douglas Trade Shows at the Blaisdell and see all the products and services and seminars available to associations. It's well run every year by Ken Cantor. I had a chance to be a speaker there. And about three or 4,000 people go through. So if you missed it this year, I hope you can go next year. I've invited Jane Sugimura to come back today. You all know Jane's a co-host with me on Condo Insider. We take turns on this duties and I give her all the credit because she's a lot smarter than I am on association matters. But I always enjoy her here because there's an issue that is often misunderstood by homeowners and boards alike that creates all sorts of consequences that are good and bad depending on the circumstance. And the magic words are priority of payment. So first of all, let me welcome you back over and over again. I wish I think you should take over my job full time, <laughs> you know, that I could retire. No, well, you're doing a wonderful job, and thank you for having me back. And um, uh, yeah, you know, the, the topic today is very, very timely because it's part of a bill that's passing through the legislature. Well, before we begin, I just want to take this commercial message opportunity to say because I think one of the greatest industry organizations is the Hawaii Council of Community Associations used to be called the Hawaii Council of Association of Apartment Owners, but it's the same entity, and you're the president, been president for a long time. It's so important that boards have good education and homeowners have good education. Just a brief reminder us about HCCA and who they are. Yes, I mean, we are an organization. Uh, we have in our a group, we have professionals like you from the property management companies. We have people who sit on boards of directors, and we have, you know, some homeowners who are involved. And uh, you know, we are also involved with uh, property managers. And um, and what we like to do is uh, we educate. We have these uh, quarterly and uh, more often seminars for the public, for the condominium association. And the people, the community that you know that works and lives in condos, and to teach them about condominium law, and 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 to educate them about issues that are that affect everybody who live and work around condos. And we advocate in the legislature, in the state legislature, and in the city council. Right now, we're involved in uh, the. Um, uh, mayor's bill to retrofit condominiums. And I think we've got a resolution that will be uh, very helpful to the condos, And but that's not today's show, and we will get to that. Uh, but, you know, th those are some of the things that we are involved in. Well, it's a great organization. I can tell you how, being a part of the uh, organization as well as attending your seminars, we get two to 300 people there. Yes, we and do. And the seminars have really hot topics quality education, opportunities for questions and answers. And the best of all, you can join as an owner for $10 a year. Right. It's That's pretty pretty good value when we look at like, you know, right. uh, what costs are today. You know, and, so. and there are these shows that are free, and you can look at them on any device at any time of the day or night. And, yep. and, you know, and, and, and so. your organization, through the, uh, the small money we are able to make on these seminars, is able to fund condo and cider, and I want to raise, by the way. <laughs> you can double it, how about that? Yeah. From zero yeah, to zero. zero. Yeah. Yeah. You got that. Right. So anyway, but it's, it's, I think our mission of education and making sure the laws are good for not only just boards and management companies, but the owners and vendors and everybody else, it's a very balanced organization. Right, and, that's, and we are interested, and our focus is on trying to get everybody you know, to work together to make condominium living a positive experience. And about 40% of our population lives in some type of association, so right. it's a big item. So anywhere, you know, I've been in this industry 25 years. Priority of payment is misunderstood, and you say it to most people, particularly owners, they say, what's that? that right. So why don't we begin the first part of the show, just talk about the landscape today, and then the rest of the show, we'll talk about the bill that's going to, you know, after the break and what the, what the future may take. Okay. So tell us about priority okay. of payments. Priority of payments is in the condo statute. It was in 514A, it's in 514B. And the whole purpose of the, of the priority of payments uh, uh, provision in the statute was to ensure 
that the association would be able to collect the maintenance fees that they need to run the operations of the uh, association, right? The maintenance, the owners are assessed their maintenance fees. Those maintenance fees go to pay for the common utilities, the electrical, the water. It goes to pay for the the employees uh, that keep the op, you know, the uh, uh, the the building running, and to pay for the property management company that administers, you know, to the building, you know, every month. And so the building needs money. And so if people do, don't pay on time, it causes a problem because then the condominium doesn't have the money to pay for the gardener to come or to pay for the electricity or pay for the water. And you know these are all things that they have to pay for. And the priority of payments basically says that you, know, you have to pay your maintenance fees. And the maintenance fees are called assessments, okay? And they're defined in the statute. And, and late charges, and attorney's fees are not assessments. That is clear in the statute. But what, what the priority of payments says is that if you don't pay your maintenance fee, let's say it's $100, okay? You don't pay that month. The next month, you, when you pay, or let's say you, know, you, you pay uh, late. You pay on the 15th, which is late, okay? So now, now you owe a $25 late charge, okay? So that means that next month when you pay your maintenance fee on time, $100, 25 of it goes to the late charge first, okay? Because that's what priority, there's a priority of payments and it says that, you know, if you don't make your payments on time, it goes first to the late charges and then to attorney's fees used to collect these things. So if you have those items that are being charged to your account, when you pay your maintenance fee, and you paid $100, it will go first to the late charge and maybe to attorney's fees, which means you're late. And if you don't know that that's what's happening, the next month when you pay your $100, now you're two months late. You know, and finally, after a while, you might get a bill. And you're gonna say, why am I six months late? Nobody told me. And it's because, you know, because of the policy the management company will automatically apply it to the late charge first and to any attorney's fees and any fines before they apply it to the assessment. And, and what creates a whole lot of problems is the unit owner doesn't usually get written notice that this is happening. And, and the reason why is because the statute says if the association wants to adopt the priority of payments rule, they need to have a, they need, the board needs to adopt, you know, have a motion and adopt it. And then they need to send to every unit owner notice of what, that the priority of payments rule is now in effect. In other words, if the associate, let's say the association's been around for 10 years and they never adopted the policy, they can't do that, even though it's in the statute. And then if, if one of the board members finds us, oh, that's a good thing, why don't we do that? It'll help us collect our maintenance fees. So you have a meeting this month and the board adopts it. That means that you tell your uh, property manager to send notices, written notices to all the unit owners to say that the board has adopted the priority of payments rule and this is what's gonna happen. If you don't pay your assessment on time, then you're gonna be assessed a late charge. And when you pay your, uh, when you get around to paying your assessment, it will be charged first to the late charge and any penalties because of the late, late, late payment and maybe attorney's fees. And so that means that you are going to always be behind. And, and so, so, so this causes, you know, a, a, a lot of problems, I think, you know, with the yeah. uh, buildings. Well, let me put my perspective on it. We all know that associations are what I call zero-based budgets. So when they pass the budget for maintenance fees, and which is gonna cover reserve contributions, electricity maybe, uh, management employees, things like you said, it's based on the assumption that everybody's gonna pay. Right. And so if someone doesn't pay, in theory, you're short if you have a balanced, perfect budget in paying either your electricity or putting money in reserves, whatever it may be. So. The statute allows them to charge late fees. Right. And if they still don't want to pay, then they can be charged legal fees right. for a collection of that matter. 
But along the way, you sometimes get fines and you have other charges, which we'll talk about in a minute. So the idea behind it, as I understand it, was that when a person makes a payment, the priority payment specifies in what order that money will be applied to outstanding charges. Right, I and, guess that account. Yeah. And I'm gonna just, so we, that there is a standard, if I'm gonna just read it real quick for you. Uh, this is normally, it doesn't apply to everybody, but this is kind of the industry standard. It first goes the legal fees, second goes the fines, third goes the late fees, if you happen to have separate meter billing on the, from the association, then it goes to utilities. Then it goes to what we call other, and some associations have storage lockers and parking fees and other types of things. And then it goes to special assessments. And then finally, the last dollar goes to regular assessments, which is maintenance fees. Right. And if they didn't pay and they got somewhere up before and they only paid their maintenance fees, they have a shortage, which then they can be foreclosed on because the money was applied to something else. Right. Is that a pretty fair way to that's, analyze it? Yes, that's a fair way to analyze it. So, you know, it's interesting because um, I've seen recently in court cases locally here, in the last couple of months, where judges have said, well, show me where you notified all the owners of your priority payment policy. When did you adopt it? And sometimes this has been for decades, and nobody really knows where the priority of payment policy. Right. They know they've been doing it for decades, but finding the minutes of the notice 20 years ago becomes an impossible task. And the right. judge has said, well, since you can't prove that, so notice to the owners is a very important part of this, and because it's a disclosure kind of an issue. Right, and, and, and part of the problem is the fact that most owners don't even know. They don't have a clue about the priority of payments issue until they get caught in the morass and, and they can't figure out how to you know, fix it. Yeah, and, and the second part of that equation from my perspective is they don't know about the priority of payment policy and then most of them don't know about Act 187 and their opportunity for almost free mediation Right. where the first hour is split between the owner and the board in this case, and the balance is paid through the condo education fund, which is paid by our registration fees, right. that they have almost free opportunity to go resolve this. And, and frankly, unfortunately, some owners, they take this fine they've got for the parking in the fire zone, and they basically thumb their nose at it, and even though they're getting notices, do nothing about it, and all of a sudden it's $100 and there's a late fee on the $100 and it goes on and it goes to the lawyer and you have the first lawyer's letter. And all of a sudden they're being foreclosed on for $5,000 right. because they have ignored it, for lack right. of a better word. Right. You know? And, so. and that, that's what the problem is, is that it, uh, until it gets to a substantial amount of money, it seems like, you know, the, the, either the unit owner ignores the... Uh, communications it's getting from the association or the association <coughs> is not giving proper notice and what is really egregious is when you have these sure pay situations you know where nobody gets notice you know when you're on sure pay you don't get a monthly notice to show you what what, what you owe and so when this priority of payments happens it help hap because it happens automatically and you don't get a notice of what is owed and what's being applied sometimes you don't find out until it's a huge number, and maybe it's like a thousand dollars, and and it's like, wait a minute, where did this happen? You know, what, how come I owe a thousand dollars? And then you have to look at the prior, you know, the prior statements, and you think, ah, there it is. That's where you missed the payment, and then it started being applied to all the late charges, and you can't, and because you didn't get a statement, because you're on sure pay, you didn't know. And well, in that yeah. case, you know, it's like who's who's at fault. In fairness, and then we're going to take a break, let me just say this. Management companies typically send a 30, 60, 90 day, like this is a friendly reminder, and it would show that $25 late fee they didn't pay, or it show $25 due. The problem is owners always look at that and say, oh, the check just missed it in the mail, and they ignore that. Right. They, they get these little friendly reminders because they're not official, just saying, oh, by the way, and that should trigger the memory to say, why do I have a $25 balance? But it doesn't. So we get into this issue where you get a lot of upset people, and I'm going to tell one little war story, but right now we're going to take a short break, come back, and what's happening in the legislature on this issue, but we're going to be right back with Condo Insider talking about priority of payments. Be right back. 
we have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Welcome back to Condo Insider. We're having a very emotional discussion, even off camera <laughs> during the break. We're having this vigorous debate about priority of payments that no one seems to know about that everybody uses, where when you make your payments, they're applied in a specific order, maybe not to your maintenance fees because you have a fine or a late fee or a legal fee or or something else uh, in, involved in that. And it's kind of designed around associations need 100 cents in the dollar to pay its bills. So it's kind of steered towards protecting associations' financial interests. And I wanted to tell you, because we were talking about that, and we, I just wanted to tell you a quick short story. Sometimes it can be abused. I've heard of a, a factual situation where a board didn't like a particular owner, and they basically said, let's start fining him for his truck that he has. It's too long, even though he owned it for five years. And we'll let the fines build up, and he won't do anything about it, and then we'll foreclose on him, and we'll get him out of the building. And that's not right either. No, that's you know? not and right. And so the thing we have as a challenge as an industry is to explain to everybody what it is, and also make sure they're all aware of their value to mediation rights. Right. But let's go right to the legislature. So what's going on? Because this issue is before the legislature this year. Right. Well, it's been before the legislature for the past two or three years. And to put it in a nutshell, the priority of payments, the, the concern you know, <coughs> raised by one of the legislators is that she has heard stories where people are being foreclosed because of the priority of payments issue and where the, let's say you've got a $5,000 bill and a foreclosure is initiated and that person could lose their home. But out of that $5,000, maybe $1,000 is assessments and another $1,000 are late charges and fines and penalties. And the other $3,000 are attorney's fees. And she feels, she felt that it is wrong for a person to lose their home, where the a total amount of the so-called amounts that you owe the association aren't assessments. And so what she basically did is prepare a bill that says that uh, if you are the unit owner and the association hands you a bill and you dispute that bill, because, you know, because of the priority of payments, some of it is assessments, which are maintenance fees, some of it is late charges and penalties, and some of it is attorney's fees. Under the bill, you can, and, and, and under the condo statute, there's something called pay now, dispute later. In other words, if you want to dispute with the association, you've got to pay everything. Okay, so that means if you, in this situation where there's five thousand dollars, if that unit owner wanted to dispute it, they had to pay the five thousand, even though they disputed the the four thousand dollars in late charges and attorney's fees. The bill would say, no, 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 you pay only the assessments, which are the maintenance fees that are in dispute, and you have to keep your maintenance fees current. But during the you know what you do is you pay it and then you can dispute the late charges and the attorney's fees. And you have 30 days to go into mediation, you have 60 days to complete it. And that's what the bill contemplated. And that way, it's almost like a compromise between the association and the unit owner because the association would get 100% of their assessment, which is the maintenance fee that they are charging the unit owner. What they're not getting paid uh, right away or any late charges or penalties or attorney's fees connected 
with trying to collect that assessment. And, and the, and, and the uh, unit owner would have the opportunity to dispute that in mediation. And if they lose that mediation or an arbitration you know, a subsequent to that, they would still have to pay that amount. So it's not like the association is out of pocket. You know, uh, it gives them due process, for right, lack of yeah, a better word. The right. owners, and I think some owners, you know, they get behind. It just happens. Uh, sadly, it happens. That a lot of people would ignore it. We're actually under the statute. I think an owner who is delinquent on regular assessments, maintenance fees, has a guaranteed right of a 12-month payment plan to catch up. Plus, he has to stay current, so he can't get further. And isn't right. that correct? So, that, that, that's so, correct. And you know, the statute. I mean, the, the 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 statute does you know talk about you know payment plans in foreclosure, and you know to me I think it's you know I've been a board member I've been on on, on my association board for over thirty years, I've been president for almost ten, and you know I, I can say from experience that I see myself and my colleagues you know who sit on boards, we represent unit owners. And so we should be looking out for their benefit. And, and, and this priority of payment stuff, you know, if, if the unit owners would go to their board members, and the board members are the ones who deal with the property management, and property management companies make mistakes. They, they handle thousands of accounts. And you can't expect them to always be, you know, on track on every single account for every single association. So that's why I think it's important for, for board members to become proactive and, and have the unit owners come to them and say, you know, I got this bill and I don't understand why I'm getting these late charges and can you look into it? And they should be the ones, you know, to, to kind of resolve this and, and try to, because I think on, on the whole, most unit owners will pay their bills. They understand they have to pay their assessments. They just don't want to pay the late charges and attorney's fees unless they have to. Well, and some of it's actually unintentional uh, errors by the homeowner. Let me give you an example. You own two or three units in an association. So you send in one coupon with a check for the three units. You know, a lot of this is done electronically today. So that one check they wrote with one coupon for one unit, they end up with a credit balance on that one unit because the computer didn't know any better. Right. And the other two units have delinquencies. Right. And the owner thinks he mailed the, all of three of them. So I think it's important that the homeowners have enough diligence to look at their account. Uh, I know in our company, we're uh, in May releasing an app for your mobile phone. Now, seniors don't always have mobile phones. But um, an app on your mobile phone, and they had got that notice, they could go online instantly with their phone and look at what the issue is and deal with it on an app online. So, but it's not always just the management company not doing a good job making a mistake. A lot of times owners contribute to the problem right. because they don't include the coupons. They, they bundle the checks together. I've seen checks for two or three associations in one check, and then we have three coupons. And how do you, how do, you do that? You know, because the check's got to be made out to the name of the association. You really can't write a check from one association to another. It becomes complicated, right? Right. And, you know, so, so the owner, so the people who sit on the board, because these are their constituents, so to speak. I mean, they got to be the, the, the conduit, the, the communicators, you know, between the property management company and uh, the unit owners. But, you know, going back to the legislation, um, that's the way it was originally written, but it's been amended. Uh-oh. Okay. That doesn't sound good. No, and the amendment took out <clears throat> the mediation of the dispute. And, you know, the, and basically, you know, the bill said, the, the, the pay now, I mean, you know, pay now, dispute later, means that you only pay the assessment and you can dispute the late charges and the attorney's fees. Now that portion has been taken out. And what it was replaced with is now the associations will have to give on an annual basis a notice to all of their unit owners about the priority of payments and exactly what it is. And if you have, if you're on the sure pay, on any renewal of that sure pay, which is every, you know, every time the maintenance fees change, you have to renew the sure pay, right? Because it's going to be a different amount. On that renewal portion, you have to put a notice about the uh, priority of payments and what it is, and the fact that you know if you are late, that you know there's a certain order of payments, and that's where your payment will be applied. And I, I have a problem with um, uh, those changes only because, I mean, number one, I mean, I preferred the other one, which would have allowed a unit owner to dispute 
you know, the late charges and the attorney's fees. Uh, and now there is no opportunity to do that. And, uh, but, you know, what I think, you know, what I'm going to be doing, because right now the bill is, has just crossed over from the House to the Senate, and we're going to have to amend that bill. If that's how they want to do it, if that's how the legislators want to do it, then um, we're going to have to uh, put in a proviso that it only applies to those associations who have previously adopted the priority of payments you know, plan. Because the statute says, I mean, the only way you can do this is, is, is if the board adopts the policy, there's got to be a motion, and there's got to be action by the board to adopt the policy, and then a, a notice has to go out to all unit owners. Now, our thoughts on that as a management company, of course, the bill hasn't passed yet, yeah. is that we don't disagree with the disclosure, reminding the owners every year, this is how it works. We don't have a problem with, even with the boards have adopted the policy, reaffirming the policy currently in the board meeting minutes. What we don't like is the pay now dispute later portion. You know, it's easier for us to have that policy, but the reality of it is, Homeowners are innocent people who don't understand if they have that fine or late fee or legal fee, why not, yes, insist on you have to be current with your regular assessment maintenance fees, but you have the opportunity to use this mediation because sometimes it's used against you and you could own a lot of money because you made one payment late and the late fees compound and then you got a small fine and then they send it to the attorney in a small number and an attorney's letter is a couple, 300 bucks by the time you send the first letter out and if they don't answer, it gets compounded. So we agree with you on that. But I also know that we're at the end of our show. We could debate this for a long time. So any last comments real quick? One in 15, 20 seconds, what you want to say about priority payment? Uh, I think it's a bad idea. I think, I mean, I think it's, you know, it, it, it helps associations, but we got to fix it. We got to fix it because it's creating a lot of problems. And the, in the, the current version of the bill, I don't think addresses that fix. And I think it still needs to be worked on. Well, I'll support you that and help you with that. I want to thank all of you for attending and watching Condo Insider today. We've had a vigorous debate about priority of payments. Uh, any event, you should know it exists, and there are risks and liabilities for you as homeowners if you don't pay your bills on time or all the charges assessed by the association. We're hopeful this legislative session we can approve upon it so you have a chance for a value to mediation or some other dispute resolution, and we're working on that. We want to thank you for watching Condo Insider. Thank you, Jane, for being here, as usual. Oh, thank you. I'm disappointed you didn't fire me, but we'll have to work <laughs> on that. So anyway, thanks again, and aloha.